Hey everyone, I'm Whitney and I post sewing and crafting tutorials here on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a half apron and it is fully lined. It features side panels, pleats, ruffles, whatever you like you can add into it. And it is not as hard as it looks and so I'm going to show you first how to make the apron and then I'm going to do my best to explain how to adapt it to make it in any size that you want. So let's get started. For my aprons, I like to feature vintage character sheets, but you can definitely use whatever fabrics you like. I also like to make them, um, for my size, for the waist to be about 19 inches wide, and then about 25 inches at the widest part of the bottom, and about 17 inches long. And this will fit about a size small or medium, and in order to end up with this size apron, you will need your pieced front to measure about 29 inches wide. So for my feature section, I fussy cut a design from a Little Mermaid sheet and I decided to use this sheet in particular because the Little Mermaid is out of the vault this year and so I just thought it would be fun to make an apron from one of the original sheets that came out when the movie came out. And before I do anything else working with the sheet, I like to fuse a layer of lightweight fusible interfacing onto the back and that's just to make sure that the fabric won't stretch or warp as I'm working with it. The piece I cut measured 21 by 15 inches, and so I'm going to have to add on to it to get it to the desired width of 29 inches. I selected a pink polka dot fabric to accent the print and cut two pieces 5 inches by the width of the fabric. I used the first strip to sew onto either side of the main piece. Once sewn, open it up and iron flat, then top stitch along the seam line. The front is now as wide as I need it to be. Sometimes it takes two borders to get the look that I like, but it's really something you just play around with as you go. Now onto the lining. I cut the lining 23 inches wide by 15 inches tall. That is about 6 inches smaller than the front currently is. I do this so the front wraps around to the back and gives it a nice finished look. Line the lining fabric up with one edge and sew to attach. Then line the other edge up and sew it. You should now have a tube of fabric that is open at the top and the bottom. Situate it so you have the same amount of the border print showing on each side. If you don't want a ruffle at the bottom, you would sew the bottom closed at this point. But I want a ruffle, so I grabbed the other 5 inch strip I cut before and folded in half wrong sides together and iron. Then at the ends, flip them so they are right sides together and sew the short edges. When flipped back to the right sides, you should have nicely finished ends. Sew along the long side with the raw edges just to base the two layers together. Then you can start to insert the ruffle. It's best to put both ends in place, lining up the raw edges of the ruffled strip with the raw edges at the bottom of the apron. Once the corners are pinned in, find the exact middle of the apron and the middle of the strip and pin. From there, you can gather or pleat however you like until the strip fits the size of the apron. After everything is penned into place, sew along the bottom edge to attach. I ended up sewing along it twice just to be extra secure. When flipped right sides out, it should look something like this, and the only visible raw edges should be at the very top of the apron. Go ahead and give it all a nice press with the iron. Now it's time to gather the top. I want my finished waist to be about 19 inches, and right now it's about 25 inches. So I gather along the top by pushing little bits of the fabric under the presser foot as I slowly sew. 
This is a bit of trial and error to get the gathering right, but after making a couple, you really get a feel for it. Then all that's left is to add the ties. I go the super easy route and use pre-made extra wide double fold bias tape. I find the very middle of the bias tape and the apron and pen them together with the apron sandwiched between the bias tape layers. Then I pen at the outer edges. Finally, I start sewing at one end of the bias tape all the way to the other end, making sure the apron is nicely in place inside the tape as I go. I usually go back and sew a second row of stitching on the apron portion. Then it's complete. Okay, so now I'm going to do my best to explain how to adapt the sizing to fit any size of apron that you want to make. You first want to measure yourself and decide how wide you want the actual apron to be. This is not your entire waist, it's just how much of your body, um, from like your side to your side, of how much you want the apron to cover. And like I said, I prefer about 19 inches for a small or a medium. Add about 6 to 10 inches to that number to account for the gathering that's done along the waistline and this is to make the apron fit better on your body since bodies do have shape and curves to them and the larger the size that you are the more inches you want to add so if it's for um, you know a smaller medium I add the 6 inches if it's for a larger size you would want to add uh, maybe the 10 inches for gathering then add four to five inches for the wraparound portion of the borders where the front fabrics wrap around to the back side of the apron for the nice finished look. And you should now have a number that is 10 to 15 inches bigger than your original waist number that you decided on. You want to cut your lining six inches smaller in the width then you want your finished apron to be and the length of your entire feature panel. Your feature panel can be cut really to any size as long as you build onto it to equal the width of the largest number that you got earlier. You can also add borders at the bottom if you need extra length or you can just go the ruffle route like I showed earlier um, which is my preferred method because it does give a little extra detail to the aprons. For the ruffles, you cut your piece twice as tall as you want your finished ruffle to be, plus one inch for seam allowance. And then I usually cut mine just the width of the fabric um, because that gives me plenty of room to gather it down and have a nice ruffled or pleated look. By the way, all the seams in this video were sewn with a half inch seam allowance, and so that is the measurement that I figured into all of the uh, numbers and everything that I'm giving you. Then lastly, for the bias tape, I use the entire length that it is when it comes out of the package, and depending on brand, that will be three or four yards. Um, so that is plenty long enough for pretty much every size out there, so you don't really have to worry about that. So I hope this video was easy enough to understand. If you still have any questions about the um, process of making the apron, then definitely leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you want more lined apron inspiration, definitely check out my inspiration video I posted before. It is linked in the information icon and I show several other aprons I've made using this exact same process. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.